This is video number two in my DIY drone series. Last time around, I built myself a drone based on a Raspberry Pi, which is this bad boy here. Now though, I've gone and set myself a challenge to make this fly and follow me just using AI. There's a ton of work needed to make this happen, like figuring out where people are in a camera's reference frame. Then I can figure out where to tell the drone to fly to to follow those people that the camera can see. Today, I'm teaching the drone how to see distance to things using OpenCV. Last time around, I showed how I'm using the Raspberry Pi Zero to handle all of the flight control shenanigans on my drone. But I don't quite think it's gonna be powerful enough to handle doing all this craziness needed to actually follow me in the air. So instead, I decided to have a look at using the NVIDIA Jetson Nano to do all this heavy lifting. Oh, um, if you're just watching this video to get an understanding of depth mapping in OpenCV, you might want to jump ahead to the timestamp, I think, here. Um, I'm going to, because otherwise I'm going to be jumping straight into an unboxing session. Cue montage or whatever. Wow, look at that. Look, look how small this is compared to my hands. I knew it was called Nano, but I didn't quite expect quite how small this thing is. If I grab one of my old Raspberry Pis and compare the size between the two, it's not that much different to be honest. And when you consider that the majority of the hardware around this is actually the development kit, and the big thing is actually just this bit here with the heatsink attached. The amount of power this packs into, into such a small size is nuts. I really can't wait to try out what it can do. And speaking of power, I can actually get this running in as little as 5 watts. So when this is strapped to the underside of my drone and it's hooked up to battery power, I don't have to worry about it shortening my flight time all that much. So, uh, I think I'm going to rig up my stereo camera with it and see if I can produce a depth map. Let's go mess around with it. Okay, so this is a development setup that I'm using. I've hooked up the Jetson Nano to a monitor as well as a Bluetooth keyboard. So I'm writing all of my code directly on the device. Normally when I do these sort of projects, I'll actually copy code over from my MacBook rather than running it on there but this way around is so much faster. Through the experiments, which I'll showing off in a little bit, I've actually managed to force it to restart itself a few times. Uh, <laughs> I pushed it beyond its thermal limits, so it shut down because it overheated, but it's still running, which is fantastic. Resilient little bastard this thing is. Right, so now I've got to figure out how to turn the output of this stereo camera into a depth map. Time to go do some research. I found the best approach would be to leverage OpenCV, which is a fantastic computer vision library that solves these sort of problems. Before I could get down to doing proper fun stuff, uh, I needed to calibrate my stereo camera. Some cameras can produce distortions in the images they capture, such as causing straight lines to appear curved. This introduces error when doing computer vision. Luckily though, this distortion can be computed and corrected for. In OpenCV, you do this by taking a load of photos with a chessboard pattern in the frame, then pass those photos into its calibration API. That gives you back a matrix defining the camera's distortion, which then can be used to correct for it a little bit later down the line. Right, cool, that's done. Which means we can now do the fun bits, which is depth mapping. I've been focusing on two algorithms in OpenCV to do this, which is Stereo BM and Stereo SGBM. I have said that wrong so many times. 
Both of these algorithms rely on your input images to be rectified, which just means you've taken the results of your calibration phase, applied them, and made sure that your images line up nicely when you compare them vertically. So here's a quick overview of how the two work. Stereo BM is the faster of the two and uses block matching. It works by taking a block of pixels in the left-hand frame, scans across the corresponding x-axis in the right-hand frame, then finds the closest matching block between the two frames. The result of this is a disparity value per block, which roughly is the distance in pixels between matching blocks. A bigger value translates to being closer to the camera. It does struggle a bit with areas that lack texture, since everything looks the same in the region that's being checked. Stereo SGBM, on the other hand, uses semi-global block matching. I'm glossing over the implementation details, but the idea is that for each block of pixels in the left-hand frame, you scan across multiple directions in the right-hand frame to find the closest match. This approach is a lot more intensive, but tends to produce a much more accurate depth map. Both of these algorithms pop out disparity values, so they don't exactly give you the depth straight away. To get that, all you really need is the distance between your two cameras, and you can figure it out with a bit of maths. Let's have a look at how these algorithms actually perform on real hardware. I'm running these cameras at 640 by 480 resolution for each of these tests, and then I'm actually halving the resolution again when I'm passing each input frame into each algorithm. This is just so I can get a bit of a more of a speed boost when it comes to real world usage. After doing all these tests and everything, I ended up choosing Stereo SGBM for my usage on the drone. Reason for this is it gave pretty accurate depth maps, and I was able to actually find a version that was faster than in OpenCV using the GPU or the Jetson Nano. If you want to play around with the Python program I put together to experiment with the Jetson Nano, I put a link to it in the description below. It should literally just be a case of grabbing the code, installing your requirements, and just hitting go. So enjoy. It's probably worth me mentioning that using OpenCV for stereo depth mapping isn't actually the only thing you can do. There's a few other approaches I investigated, such as using an AI network, which is AANet to do inference and estimate depth. I also looked at getting a actual proper depth camera, like the Intel RealSense D435 is the one I was looking at. But I checked out the lead times for shipping, and we were talking something like next year. So that was completely off the cards. So make sure to have a look around for different approaches if you're trying to do this yourself as well. Depth mapping is now sorted out. This Jetson Nano can now see how far away things are from itself which is brilliant, but what it can't do still is know what it's looking at. For this drone to be able to follow me around, I need to be able to teach the Jetson Nano how to recognize people. And I'll be covering that in part three of the series. And I think I'll finally get around to doing the AI stuff I've been chatting about for uh, however many videos now. So I'll see you in the next one.